Yep. Okay, now can you hear me? Cool. So I'm so happy that lots of you are still awake and hyped up and all full of fun. Who's awake? Like, show of hands. Woo! <laughs> That's amazing. Like, when I heard you clap, I thought, like, yeah, somebody would be listening. So I was pretty much excited and hyped up about using Kakao Talk. And I thought, like, it's the best app in the world. And I was like, why don't we have it? And I was like, we invited everybody in CC to use it. And we're going crazy over these emoticons. I'm going crazy over the bunny. So... <laughs> And now, when, when um, the NIA representative had her presentation about all of these apps, and tonight I'm going to download them and try them. I know this is not very characteristic of me. Me, I always think, like, is this privacy? Does it consider that? But really, I want to try them. So, um, my presentation is not going to be about facts. I'm a big dreamer. I'm a big spectic. Um, so, I'm going to be telling you stories. Do you like stories? Show of hands. <laughs> so this is how we're going to do it. Whenever you agree or like something in the presentation, just show me your hands. Amazing. So uh, I'm going to tell you a story about, um, so I'm not going to go with like, what is the Internet of Things? And then show you a Wikipedia quote. This is not the way I work. So I'm just going to tell you a story. And this story is about um, a person who is an IoT, Internet of Things addict. And as you can see, there is um, this person, and this is supposed to be me, but it's not about me. It's about my husband. He's sitting there, and he's the internet addict. But I used my photos, like my, my illustration, illustration of a girl, so he doesn't get really upset about it. So I wake up every morning, not my husband, <laughs> and um, there is all night, there's this app that sits underneath my pillow, and it actually um, keeps track of my sleeping cycle. It tells me if I slept well or if I didn't. And it waits for me in the morning when I'm lightly asleep and not deeply asleep. And it wakes me up with a vibrating sound. And then over time, she knows how I sleep, like the app. Like I, call, I do not call it it, I call it she. But she knows how I sleep. And then by the time, like once it goes the time passes by, she knows when is the best time to wake me up without me being me annoyed, so it's rise and shine. Then, I go have shower, I go do my sports, I chose taekwondo, because I researched everything about Korea and I knew that it was the national, <laughs> I, I doubt that everybody wakes up and do taekwondo, but then. And then uh, maybe listen to some music or getting dressed, and I have all the apps that would do it. I even have an app where I can actually submit my breakfast. And then uh, I can do sports. The application can tell me how much sports should I be doing. I know it's not really working, but then. <laughs> and then eventually I leave home to work all hyped up because all of these have, uh, apps have helped me. And then my water sparkler, like if there is a lounge next to the house, you have this water. Uh, sparklers that uh, make everything green. You don't have to worry about them because they actually communicate with the local water district and they tell, um, and it, basically it tells it how much water does it need. So you don't have to be worrying about overflowing it and it's actually being very nice to the uh, environment by not wasting water and all of these data collection um, and you're actually saving money while doing that. So it's all in all feeling happy because um, this sort of big data is helping me. And then at 9 a.m. I'll be in the car putting all of these, just a reminder, this is also my husband, this is not me, uh, that I'm following all of these apps. What, what are the apps that you use over here? Google Maps doesn't work. Apple Maps doesn't work. What do you use over here in Korea for navigation? Naver? Naver and Dam. But they're all in Korean. You should make them in English. <laughs> so, and I use all of these apps that tell me, like, you should go this way, not that way. Um, you should be uh, avoiding this street. And sometimes it's, it's overwhelming to get to work. By the time I'm in work, I'm connected. Uh, I'm sending emails. I'm uh, telling my calendar, telling me what to do. Um, and it's like the estimation is that every minute we send 204 million emails, which is, you can do the calculations and see how much data that is. And then finally, by 5 o'clock, I'm back home. 
we haven't bought this yet, but actually um, we bought the older model, but I can actually do my um, laundry through my watch. I just have to set it up the night before. So it's just the right uh, time to do it when the electricity expenses are low. Uh, I can heat the food I have in the oven and my fridge can tell me what to shop. And there's also another app that would tell me which items are on discount so I can save my money. Then, after we get home and while eating, we're testing all of our friends to tell us, like, what are you doing tonight? Are you going karaoke? Are you going to, um, or maybe just sending us them the photos, my mom updating me, I live in Istanbul, she lives in Lebanon, so maybe she's updating me on her news, sending me photos of kittens and babies and prompting me to get pregnant now that I get married. Do they do that here in Korea? Like they never stop. <laughs> It's like, get married, get married, get married, and then you get married, and then get a baby, get a baby, get a baby. So, most probably, this is what be happening. <laughs> this is what would be happening to me, like, in the five afternoon. And then later on, I give up. It's like, I don't want to do anything. Like, my mom has exhausted me with this baby talk. I just want to sit there by my TV. Uh, my TV is controlled practically from everywhere. And then um, we have this amazing TV that is actually connected to the lightning. So it lowers the lightning, so it's the perfect viewing atmosphere. Uh, it also works with um, air conditioning, it's 21. And it also, like, it's the perfect, just everything is, at, is communicating to each other at home. And we're sitting there watching a movie that we have chose on our iPad. So. What is the Internet of Things? It's not about people being connected. It's about actually um, things being connected, things talking to each other. It's not only me that is talking to my apps that are talking to my things. So it's my watch, it's my iPhone or Samsung <laughs> or Android. It's my TV talking to my lighting. It's things talking to things, not even me telling them. They just collect data about me and then they do everything to make me happy. Right now, there are 13 billion things that are connected. And by the year 2020, there's going to be 50 billion things connected. So who cares? The first thing that would come to mind is that businesses might care. You have all of these companies that are striving to do all of these smart things that can connect to each other and talk to each other to make you feel better about your life and to make your life easier. But is it all? Like Samsung is now in talks and, uh, with um, a company called Smart Things and they're working together. They, acqui they acquired it for like billion something dollars. So they can actually be doing these things not just empowering these things, not only doing the software, but only actually investing in companies to do things. Um, Apple is also, uh, buy, uh, Google is also buying Nest, which is also a hardware manufacturer of things like thermostats that um, tells you what is the weather is. Um, Samsung, LG, all of these companies that you know are investing in the Internet of Things. And why? Because it's, it makes a whole lot of money. In the health sector, like tracking, monitoring health, um, it's a $69 billion uh, revenue. Uh, in the utilities section, utilities by that is like your fridge, your, um, the scale you stand on, that is never accurate, but then it's, it's utility. It's $36 billion. Mobile phone, we all know they're making a whole lot of profit just by changing the model, they're making profit. Making your phone do things for you, like you'll buy it. I'm, a, I'm an Apple addict. Um, also, the cars, now all of our cars are connected and basically one day you'll wake up and the car would know where you wanna go. I know that Yandex that my husband uses, I call it his Russian girlfriend, like she knows where to take him and which road he prefers, even if it's like crowded, she knows that he wanna go there. So by 2020, these are the 2020, um, uh, 2020 predictions, and the worldwide market will grow to be 7.1 trillion compared to 1.9 trillion in 2013. This is how much money they're making. So now we know why companies care and why businesses care. So why do we care? We care, in my own opinion, for two reasons. 
One of them because it's comfortable and it's convenient and it's like it's all at your fingertip. You just press a button, it happens. And this is really nice. Like we work hard, we, work, we worry about so much things. Why should I worry what is in my fridge or not? This is one thing that technology can help me. And other people might argue and say that it's about health and safety. All of these data being collected, um, they are actually useful for people. Uh, people can actually know if there is a catastrophe going on. Or people can actually gather data to help when there is a um, natural disaster. You can see Google.arc doing a whole lot of projects and Google Green. Check out these two initiatives by Google and you can see my point. But then, come and think again. Okay, I'm comfortable. Okay, I can tell myself I'm doing, um, I'm opening up my data for a greater good like helping other people in distress, or maybe um, helping map the flu epidemic and other people won't get affected. But then, do I really want all of my navigation to be, um, um, to be surveyed by FID? Do I want uh, my insurance company to know that I added up five kilos, that I got sick uh, three times this year? Would they change their mind about giving me insurance? Um, would I want somebody who's not family to know when I am home or not? And finally, would I want somebody from the government actually tapping into my data? <laughs> maybe I won't, maybe I don't. But who decides which data I, like, I wanna share and which data I don't? So, one of the big key points is like big data and privacy. Like everybody's going, ooh, about it. Like me, I hear myself telling my husband, like, disconnect, don't buy that gadget. It's only a gadget, but it's going to hook you up to the matrix. Everybody's going to know everything about you. I don't know what breached. I don't know what that's like. I see him enjoying using all of these cool gadgets that would make his life easier. And I see myself going to him, it's like, check your index to see which better way to go so as not to be stuck in traffic. But then I worry a lot, like, where is this data going? Who, who has access to it? What if, like, Uber has a breach and then um, he exposes where we live and our social security number and I don't know what? So, for this, people are coming up with best practices. One of them would be be transparent about who the data is sharing. That's why we all sign the term of service to every app we download and we actually read it, right? All of us read it. Who reads it? When you press I agree, who reads it? You. You're a lawyer, you cannot say. <laughs> You're definitely reading it, but unless you wanna hire him to read all of your terms and services, be my guest. And then they tell you best practices is maybe you should have access to the data that is being collected and maybe you have the right to edit it. But guess what? Do you know Snapchat? You don't have access to the data you create. It's this app that everybody's crazy about where you just film videos and share photos and by the end of the day, they're deleted. They're deleted from your phone. They're not deleted from the database. And you don't get to access it. So if I wanna go back and see what I shared a year ago, I cannot delete it from the database, I cannot access it, I cannot see it, I cannot remember what is it. And this fast, consumable con uh, content is becoming a trend. So, what? Somebody found a solution that why don't we just send out surveys and ask people if you search your name, Whatever comes with it and comes on the search engine doesn't affect your reputation. Like, see if we're doing well with your data. And unless you're a data analyst or a search engine optimization specialist, tell me how it's going to happen. If I type my name and then, then I find next to it, like, uh, sexually transmitted diseases, what's that? Why, how, what happened? Like, why, is it, why am I getting these results? Is it because I have it? Did I search it? Did I, I, I don't know what did I do on Google to have such search results. But then imagine if my boss actually types my name in and he's looking at it and he sees STD. What, what sort of that? What, what sort of info are you like associating with me? What have I ever done? 
Once I searched for my mom about um, a clothes brand, and then it, came, it kept coming up. Once I bought underwear from Amazon and I used my husband's account. And at work, he's opening Amazon and he gets photos of bras and underwear. So why is he getting it? Because I bought it <laughs> from his account. So can't we have a say? Do you think we should have a say as a consumer? Who agrees that we should have a say as a consumer? It's my data. I'm volunteering it, and I should have a saying in it. I say CC can do something about it. And maybe some of you would argue that CC is about copyright, right? What does it have to do with the Internet of Things? Why should a set of licenses that deal with copyright issues deal with Internet of Things and my open data? Well, I say it's not, CC is not about content. CC is not about the set of licenses that you see, like these four licenses that you combine. I say whoever was here in the morning, I had a, I had a, a slide about it, but then I read what he wrote. And I was like, how can he put it? How can academia put all of what I'm feeling and all of my sentiments about CC and how it empowers people in these sentences and then matching it. So I deleted my two, three, four sli uh, slides that I have it, and I just have this morning's slide from the morning presentation. This was truly inspirational. For me, CC is also about empowering me. They em CC empowered us to f open up news during the Arab Spring. It made people feel comfortable about expressing themselves and expressing themselves in a way that every other media outlet would pick it up. People would do graffiti and share it. People would express themselves not being, having this anonymity. It truly really empowered us. And this is what CC is all about. So my question is, and I'm not waiting questions from you, but of course, if you have it, you can ask it afterward. But then I want to know how CC can help. Me, I would dream of a set of licenses that would actually be in the metadata of things or be implemented with makers where can, you can actually set your fridge on the info that you want to share. I want to share what I eat with the Ministry of Health just for the purpose of research. I want to share the data that I use in my navigation for border security but I don't want it to be used by the car maker who would bombard me with all of this info that I don't need and maybe not sell me a car when I go buy from it. I don't want to share it with my insurance company. So imagine you get to choose maybe like I share it for research, I share it for science, I share it for greater good, I share it for crisis. That's my dream. I don't know if CC can do it, but maybe that's my dream. How about CC helps do policies? We already do policies for governments and OER, so why don't we start on policies for governments in um, Internet of Things and then work with all of these makers to make it happen. So if you have any ideas about how CC can help, you can tag us on Get Creative on the Summit hashtag on Twitter or anywhere else and we'll pick it up. Thank you.